In this video, we're going to complete example two. It says, factorize the following using the difference of two squares. Now, the difference of two squares is something that we covered in a previous topic uh, where we were learning to expand. This time we're learning to factorize. So what I would like to do is just remind you how we use the difference of two squares to expand an expression. So let's say I was expanding uh, the expression x plus 6 and then x minus 6. Now you might remember when expanding using the difference of two squares, you'll have two sets of brackets and they'll look exactly the same except one will have a plus and one will have a minus. And when this occurs, you look at each term inside the bracket. So we've got x and 6 inside each set of brackets. And we're going to square each of these terms. So we're going to square the x, giving us x squared, and we're going to square the 6. Now 6 times 6 is 36. And then between these two terms, we're going to put the minus symbol. And this is the shortcut that was taught in a previous lesson. So if this is what expanding looks like, what does factorizing look like? Let's say we are asked to factorize x squared minus 36. And factorizing is the opposite of expanding. So if x squared minus 36 is the result we get when we expand this expression, then factorizing will go in reverse. We will have a result of x plus 6 and x minus 6 when we factorize the expression x squared minus 36. Now it was really easy for me to factorize this expression here because I already had the answer over here on the left. What do we do when it's not so obvious? Well, we just do the opposite of what we did when we expanded. When we expanded, we squared each term. What's the opposite of squaring? Well, the opposite of squaring is to find the square root, which is kind of like unsquaring. So let's focus on our two terms here. Let's focus on x squared and also on 36. What happens when we square root x squared, which is the same as unsquaring something? Well, we're going to get x. We're going to go back from x squared to x. What happens when I square root 36? Well, when I square root 36, I go back to 6. I can see I've gone back to my x and 6, which is what I had before I expanded this expression here. Once I've found my two terms, it's as simple as writing two sets of brackets with both those two terms in each set, one with a plus and the other with a minus. All right, let's get right into our example now. For question A, we can see we've got two terms with a minus sign between them. That tells me that I can use the difference of two squares here. So I want to square root each term. What do I get when I square root y squared? Well, I'm going to get y. And what do I get when I square root 25? Well, I'm going to get 5. So these are the two terms that I'm looking at using. And I'm going to write up two sets of brackets. And in each set of brackets, I'm going to have a y and I'm going to have a 5. And then all I've got to do is make sure that one set has a plus and one set has a minus. By the way, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. We can have y minus 5 first and y plus 5 second if you prefer. Okay, we'll move on to question B now, which is more complicated, uh, but it's not too bad. Same deal again. I'm going to square root both terms. Now, I know that when I square root a squared, I'm going to go back to a. What I need to also do is square root 64. Now, the square root of 64 is 8. So I get 8a. So we're just square rooting the number and the pronumal separately. So we also need to square root 36, which is 6. And I need to square root b squared, which takes me back to b. 
And then all I need to do once again is have two sets of brackets, like so. And in each set of brackets, I put both terms 8a and 6b, the same in both sets of brackets. One's going to be a plus and one's going to be a minus. So just to change things up, I'll make the first one a minus and the second one a plus. All right, moving now on to question C, and it's going to get a little tougher here. We can square root x squared really, really easily. But square rooting 45 and square rooting 5 is not going to work out so great. Let's actually have a look at what will happen. If I square root 45, I get this nasty long decimal. The same for the square root of 5 as well. So how am I going to get around that? When this happens, generally there is a factor that we need to take out first. And I'm looking at both these numbers and I'm thinking, what can I divide both of these numbers by? I can divide them by 5. Okay, so I'm going to take out this common factor of 5, like so. And if I divide them by 5, 45 divided 5 is 9. So I get 9x squared. And 5 divided 5 is 1. So I write minus 1. Now, after taking this factor of 5 out, I'm left with an expression which I can square root. I can square root 9 and I can square root 1. So when I square root 9x squared, I'm going to get 3. The square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of x squared is x. When I square root 1, I just get 1. So I'm going to have two sets of brackets with these two terms, with my 3x and my 1. Both sets of brackets will have the same two terms. One will be a plus and one will be a minus. So what do I do with that 5 that was at the very beginning? Well, I put that at the beginning of my two sets of brackets. Let's now look at question D. I can see, once again, I can't square root these numbers. I can't square root 8, and I can't square root 18. So I've got to divide them by something. I've got to take out some factor. I believe it's going to be 2. What do I get when I divide 2? Well, 8 divided 2 is 4. So I get 4 c squared d squared, and 18 divided 2 is 9. And I need to take this 2, this common factor, and put it at the left of the set of brackets. And I'm now left with two numbers where I can square root them. I can square root 4 and I can square root 9. So what do I get when I square root 4 c squared d squared? Well, the square root of 4 is 2. And then I'm going to have 2cd. When I square root 9, I'm going to get 3. So this gives me the two terms that I'm looking for. I'm looking for 2cd and 3 in each set of brackets. And then I need to put a minus in one set and a plus in the other. And because of this factor of 2, I need to write that to the left of my set of brackets. Now, before we finish, there's something really important that I need to mention. In this example, it told us to use the difference of two squares to factorize each expression. But it's very unlikely that you'll be told how to factorize an expression such as this one. So how are you going to know when to use the difference of two squares? Well, it's not actually that difficult. Because what we noticed was that every single expression here always had two terms with a minus sign between them. So as soon as you see that, it is very likely that you need to use the difference of two squares to factorize the expression. Anyway, that concludes this video on example two. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.